Second John. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, shall be with us forever. Grace be unto you, mercy and peace from God the Father, and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Well, we're down to verse 3. Previous studies can be found on the YouTube and uh, the sermon net. We're not going to do a review. We're going to get right into the study. Uh, I leave it to you to go back and listen to what we dealt, dealt with so far. And we come to grace be with you, mercy, and peace. We move into these three areas of a Christian life that only comes from God. Grace, mercy, and peace are never attributes of Satan. Satan will, will endure to love to put you into hell. He will not extend mercy as you are cried out into the lake of fire. And for all eternity you will have no peace. But God for so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son the mercy that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life, the grace and the peace for all eternity. What opens in verse 3 of 2 John is something the world and Satan cannot offer anybody. Again, the Bible is written to those that are saved, not to those that are lost. Few verses get, do you find for those that don't know the way of God, don't know the way of Jesus Christ or the Bible. But most of the Bible is written to, for Jews, God's people. Again, the attributes of grace, mercy, and peace are certainly not found in Satan. Never. The world can display grace, mercy, and peace. But it lacks for, for what shall we say, foreverness. There may be peace, but it won't last. Grace is found in 1828 Webster's Dictionary. I'll list the first five. Of 20. And it's amazing that once the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary, gave scripture and glory to God at one time. I wonder what you'll find in a Webster's Dictionary copyrighted for this year. Number one, favor, goodwill, kindness, disposition to, to another as a grant made as an act of grace. Or each or all may win a lady's grace. Two, appropriately, the free, unmerited love and favor of God, the spring and source of all the benefits men receive from Him. If by grace, then is no more of works. Romans 11. It says, dictionary quoted the Bible. Number three, favorable influence of God, divine influence or influence of the Spirit, in renewing the heart and restraining from sin. My grace is sufficient for thee, 2 Corinthians 12. Number four, the application of Christ's righteousness to the sinner. Where sin abound, grace did much more abound, Romans chapter 5. Five, a, st a state of reconciliation to God, Romans 5. So grace is favor. Grace is the unmerited love of God. Grace is the influence favorable of God. Grace is the application of Christ's righteousness to the sinner. And five, it is the reconciliation to God. Grace, free, merit, un, free unmerited love and favor of God. Nothing is free in this world. There's always a cost to somebody. If you get it free, someone else paid. To you it is free. God gives it freely, but at the cost of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. 
It costs or sacrifice, John 3.16, I quoted earlier, leaving heaven. Jesus Christ had to leave glory, a cost, coming down to the sin-cursed planet as the creator. He suffered, wept, was rejected, bruised, and tortured. Read Isaiah 53. Our salvation, we say, is free, but yet it costs Jesus. We don't pay nothing. Jesus paid. He died innocent and sinless. And he died that we might live. And our cost? Zilch. Free. It is only by Jesus Christ and what can man do? We are made of the same stuff that Jesus walked on. Dust and water. It is not who we are or what we are, but who is Jesus, the Son of God? It's not us, it's what Jesus. Men will live forever in glory or die and burn the lake of fire by how they react to Jesus Christ. Which is all grace, mercy, and peace is only in one, Jesus Christ. Your eternal life, forgive me, I'm not feeling well. Your eternal life, your life after death, will be the result of what you do with Jesus. Now, take your Bibles to Genesis 6 8. As we study grace, the first place you find it in the Bible is Genesis 6 8. And Genesis 6 8 says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And the entire population of the world at that time, and only one man. Noah could have died with the entire population of the world at his time. You could die and burn in hell forever and God would still be righteous. Noah was free from judgment of what? What he had done? Not. He was told by God to build an ark. Had he disobeyed and rejected God's mercy, he would have died with his family and would be burning in hell today. Grace is that Noah survived the flood and is not in hell. Receiving grace from God could affect others. Seven others were saved from that flood. His wife, his sons, and their wives. Because of God's grace and one man's obedience to the grace of God. Because Jesus Christ obeyed the Father. By one man we have access to grace. We have access to to be reconciliated back to God by one man, and it's not you. The first New Testament, Luke 2.40. Luke 2.40. We're not going to go through all the grace. You can spend time in the Bible, study, show thyself approved unto God, a man that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Give you a little time to study yourself. Luke 2, find my place, 40, find the verse, <laughs> I got the chapter, just don't have the verse, pages stick together, I don't know why, 240, first place in the, old, in the New Testament, and the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. That's the Lord Jesus Christ as a child. 
Jesus Christ received the same grace that is given to us. God loved his son and showed him favor. Now read the life of Christ and all the protection and how in the Gospel of John it wasn't his time as of yet. How the devil sought to take him. The grace and favor God given him or gave him for his love of the creation man. Because Jesus was willing to give himself. God gave Jesus grace. You want grace in your Christian life? You gotta give of yourself. We, those that have obeyed God, are freed from the law. We, by grace, now I cut down to the wrong part. It's the obedience that Jesus had, the Son had in the Father. John 1.17 John 1.17 For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 14, John 1. The Word was made flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who has all grace? Jesus does. You don't want the law. The law will find you guilty. And you'll stand before a judge one day, judge who is God. You don't want to be found guilty. It never, the law has never cleared, nor has the law ever showed mercy. Now, a judge may sit at his, his seat and pronounced that the, the, the prisoner needs to spend 60 days in jail according to the law. But I'm going to set sentence probation. Now the law said jail. The judge may set something else. But the law says. And no judge and no man has the right to go to the law books with the eraser and to erase what the law said. Paul, by the law, should have been stoned to death for murdering Christians. But grace came into his life, the Lord Jesus Christ, that he got saved. David, Saul, Samuel, Samson, etc., were all sinners. And they were all guilty, for all have sinned and come to show the glory of God. Jesus Christ gives grace what the law could not do. Christ finished. So the law and Satan have something in common. There's great, there is no grace, there's no mercy. You say you throw yourself at the mercy of the court, not the law. We, those that obey Christ, are freed from the law. We have grace. I will not stand before the Lord Jesus Christ as my salvation and the law will appear. No, it's gone. It's under the blood. Christ finished. My sentence, my book is the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll stand before the judge as far as my salvation. 
by the shed blood of the sinless Lamb of God, we are now received in God's presence. If it were not so, we would have the wrath of God abiding on us still. What prevents you from the wrath of God? John chapter 3, the Son. Now let me show you. John 3. Thirty six. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life. So grace gives everlasting life. And he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abiding on him. Grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is not only to be reconciled to God, but you do not get the wrath of God. A lost man is graceless. The Apostle Paul speaks much on grace. 91 times. Four times in Romans 11.6. It says in 11.6, And if by grace, then, it, then is it no more works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. But if it be of works, then is it no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. Four times in that verse, Romans 11.6, grace is mentioned. The verses that Paul speaks about grace are, in Romans, 20 verses. 2 Corinthians, 13 verses. Ephesians, 12 verses. Galatians, 7 verses. 1 Corinthians, 6 verses about grace. Colossians, 5 verses. 4 verses in 2 Thessalonians, 2 Timothy, and Titus. 3 verses in Philippians and 1 Timothy. 2 verses in 1 Thessalonians and Philemon. Since Paul's encounter with Jesus in Acts 9, Grace follows Paul. Acts 11.23, 13.43, and verse 26 in chapter 14, 15.11 and 40, 18.27, 20, 24, and 32. Grace does not become before salvation today grace comes after the Lord Jesus Christ after you have received him with your heart and a profession by your mouth Romans 10 now how does the Bible close Revelation 22 21 states the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all Amen. John is the writer of the second John epistle that we're studying. The writer of Revelation closes the book of Revelation. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a way to end a book after reading Revelation 20 about the second death in the lake of fire. For those who do not get grace, the ending of the book, New Jerusalem, the new earth, and the new heavens, ends with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, with no more tears, no more pain, no more, no more sorrow, a new body, and eternal life, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Life is by Jesus. Grace is by Jesus. Grace that is rejected, man is rejected by the one that offers the grace. Now, we're going to stop right there. We'll pick up with mercy next week.
Well, I'd like to end with a quote again. Grace that is rejected. Man is rejected by the one that offers the grace. <coughs> Excuse me. The only grace you'll get is by the Lord Jesus Christ. And what is that grace? Reconciliation back to God, no more wrath, eternal life. And that's it. Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his return.